Hi guys, this is Nate Hoffman with G Suite for Healthcare Providers. And I put together this little tutorial. We recently did a webinar and it was clear to me that certain things weren't as clear as they could have been. So I wanted to put together this tutorial that helps to streamline and uh, simplify some of the information that we shared. So it's a little more palatable uh, for everyone. So first of all, we talk a lot about Google Forms. And there's a couple key concepts that you need to understand up front about Google Forms. First, if you are gathering data on the spot in an immediate sense, Google Forms works great, right? I Let's say I'm gathering um, like blood pressure and heart rate and vital signs, and I'm going to do that on the spot, and I, that data is going to be you know, immediately available. I, I submit the Google Form. It, it's done, right? That works great. Now let's say I am, uh, in my case as a physical therapist, jumping from one patient to another and I often don't finish my notes until I have a break in my day. In that sense it's not great because if I leave my computer alone and then it turns off or it goes into a sleep mode and then I open it back up, the browser will refresh and I'll lose any data that I've entered into a Google Form. In that scenario, it makes more sense, given my workflows, to either use a Google Doc or Google Sheets to do my documentation versus a Google Form, okay? Now that said, again, some of you might be in a scenario where you are gathering information and do, or you like to do your documentation on the spot and be done with it. If that's you, then I really, really highly tout using Google Forms. Now, Google Forms, just so that you kind of get, get a concept, it's like creating a questionnaire, and you can do a lot of different things with it, and I'll go through some of those different um, options. But here's the basic concept. You can use it for yourself as a practitioner. You can maybe have your administrative people use it for gathering certain information or maybe patient demographics. And then you can also use it for gathering information from your patients, like doing your intake forms and your consent forms. All of that can be done using Google Forms. That said, if you feel like you need help with some of those things, you can always get a hold of us. And we have people who are contracted with us who are more than happy to help put together some of these forms for you. Now, let's jump into this a little bit. So, first of all, to open up a Google Form, I'm going to come here, I'm going to push New, and then I'm going to come over here to Google Forms. Right? Once I click on that, it's going to create a brand new form. And let's say I'm doing something like, um, let's do a patient intake, intake form. I'm just going to here, put here Practice so that I know, right? And that'll automatically populate over here. And I might put in a description for what it is, you know, or maybe like if I were doing this for a patient, I'd say, please be sure to carefully read, you know, each, each question and fill out information um, appropriately. I don't know, something like that. Really, okay? So you can do something like that. Then I'm going to go on to my next question. I might do something like a health um, history, history, right? And in that case, what I want, I'm going to see. Did you see what I, I come over here to short answer? That's not. I can have them do that, and it's going to create it almost like in a paragraph form. Or I could do it as check boxes, right? I can do. Let's say I had a CAD hypertension. Um, di diabetes, etc. Right, and so from the from the patient's end, they're just going to be clicking boxes. And if you want to see what it looks like once it's in in the client's hands, you can push this button up here. It looks like an eyeball, and then it goes to a preview. And this is what it lo would look like from their end, and they can just pick and choose the the things that apply to them. Okay, so I'm going to exit back out of that. I'm going to leave that. So um, over here also, you can do, if I come to add a section, I can do multiple choice. Let's say I want them to pick only one answer from several answers. That's when I use multiple choice. I can do paragraph form for, for their answer or short answer. I might say something like, what's your, what's your chief, 
chief complaint. And then maybe I want down here, maybe I want a little bit of a descriptor so I can put in a description like, uh, so please describe the main reason for your visit today. What, you know, what is troubling you the most? Something like that. And they can put in like a short, a short answer for their chief complaint, right? Now, the other thing that you can do is if I'm doing a short answer, and let's say I want something, um, let's say a, like an email address. What I can do is this came up automatically. It's called validation. And the way that I would get to that on my own is to push response validation. Um, I just turned it off. So if I want response validation, I can say, uh, I'm going to come down to text, and I'm going to say, that's what I want. I want it specifically to be an email address when this person answers. And I can even click on this. It means that it's required. So when the patient goes in and pushes submit, so for example, if I push submit, it's going to pop up and say, hey, you needed to answer that question, and you didn't. This is really nice because because in this case, it will help guide the patient to make sure that they're filling in the stuff that they need to, or you, for that matter. All right. So that's really handy. After that, um, we have things like this, like a checkbox grid. This is really interesting. So let's say I was doing, um, like in my case, um, range of motion. And I want to get, so my rows are going to be, let's see, like um, shoulder flexion, shoulder external rotation and I want to get a lot of information from this so maybe I say I'm gonna start with maybe 90 degrees 90 degrees move on to 100 degrees 120 120 degrees and I can kinda of click roughly what it is um, and then after that I might say like okay is there painful or not not pain not painful you know, something like that. This is just a quick example. And then I want to see what that looks like when all is said and done. This is what it ends up looking like. So if I come over here to my preview and I take a look, and if I were filling this out, you know, I did patient intake. But let's say this was something that I do for my own. I could say, okay, well, they were able to move up to 90 degrees and it was painful. External rotation, oh, okay, 90 degrees and it wasn't painful. You know, something like that so that it, it gathers all your data relatively quickly. Okay. Anyway, so if that if that makes sense, so the grid can be really useful for a lot of different things. Depend. Sometimes it's just a little bit of trial and error until you figure out. Oh yeah, that's what I want my data to do. That's how I want it to um, work. File upload is very helpful if you want. Like if you're sending out something and you want a, a patient to be able to quickly take a photo or something like if they had an infection or something like that. You, it's very easy f for them from a, f a phone or a tablet to take a quick picture of whatever it is and upload it. Um, here's a drop down menu, also very, you know, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, your, I don't know, let's say, um, let's say main complaint. Maybe this is specific to like a, a low back issue. So pain with uh, sitting, pain with stooping, pain with standing, you know, something like that. And what it will end up looking like over here is uh, from a drop down menu they can choose. Okay. So like I said, there are a lot of different options and you just play around with these different things until you find the things that work for you best, right? I can have, I can ask specifically for a date, and that's just do it in short, um, short answer. That's a, like a validation where they have to give me specifically a date. I would change this to date, right? something like that. Anyway, so that's how it works. Now, let me give you a quick example of of uh, this other thing. So, first of all, I'm going to come over to one that I've created in the past for someone else. You need to understand that when you create a form, it's very easy to get that data over into a spreadsheet. You come over to responses here across the top and you click on this. The first time that you do this, what's going to happen is 
let's see if it'll do anything for me. Yeah, what's going to happen is this. It'll say create new spreadsheet or select an, an existing spreadsheet. In the case of the other one that I did, I click, clicked on create a new spreadsheet and I have all this data coming into something brand new, right? So when I click on that, this is what pops up. These are all the practices that I did for this particular client I made this for so that I could um, just kind of test the, what, I, what I created. So as I said, typically all of the data that you create, well, it, if you want to, you know, if you, you click on that spreadsheet icon and it's going to populate a spreadsheet. Now what can be really useful for us is we can have all that data populate over into a Google Doc, right? So using something called Form Publisher, you can find that, uh, you can find a whole video about that on, um, on my YouTube channel. A uh, little plug for that, please subscribe. Um, where I go through a patient intake form using Form Publisher and show how you can have all of the data um, populate a Google Doc along with the Google Sheet, right? So you can have it in several places. And I'll, for us as healthcare providers, it's nice for it to go into a doc because then I can finalize it to a PDF. Anyway, so this is what this is what it looks like using Form Publisher. This is what it looks like when it 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 creates a bunch of this. I put in some of these logos and things afterward, but it creates this template, and you can have this information. So this right here, client's attitude. If I come over here, um, that was the one that I just created. Let's go out of that. Uh, final draft. Oh yeah, back over here. So right, it's it's over here. Client's attitude. So once once the client fills that out, that's what populates over here. And I can have this anywhere in the document, so it can produce this this data anywhere I want it to within the document. Okay. So. Um, I'll show you what this is what the template looks like. It looks kind of ugly, but at the end of the day, that's once it's filled out, that's what it looks like from the client's perspective. So very, very nice, very clean. Now to take something like this, let's say though I like to have things in a PDF form. The easiest way to do that is to come over here to file. You're going to um, print it. And you're just going to come up here to the options. I say destination. I want to save it as a PDF, and that'll save it on your computer as a PDF, or you can save it on your Google Drive. If you do save on a Google Drive, it's going to save it as a PDF on your Google Drive. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, so there you go. There's a rundown of Google Forms, and I hope that that helps and kind of creates some um, more clarity behind how to use it, why to use it, when to use it, um, how to use it, all that good stuff. Anyway, folks, um, cheers and good luck.